Hey there, and just before we get to it, I thought I was being quite clever when I recorded a video a couple of months ago describing the process of applying film grain to digital footage. When I saw the 12.5 upgrade already included film grain in the open effects panel of the color page. So at first I thought, oh, well, I can scrap that video then. And then I realized that the film grain is only available in the studio version. So this should still be relevant to those of you who don't have access to the fully paid version of the software. But for those of you who do, the way to apply grain much faster than the workflow I'm about to talk about is to open up open effects, grab the film grain effect and drop it onto one of your nodes. This will reveal your settings controls in which you have some pretty nice options. So for example, you can pick the type of film stock that you're going to be using, the method in which this will be composited onto your image. You can even click on grain only to take a look at what the grain looks like and control things like its softness and saturation. Let's move on to the free solution that we have to the film grain in the node editor. Hi there and let's get to it. Today we're looking at how we can imitate film grain on digital footage. The first thing you're going to need is film grain. I didn't say I was going to show you how to generate film grain, I only said I was going to show you how to composite it in. I suppose you could generate your own using something like turbulent noise inside of After Effects. You could potentially find some online. I've got high quality 4K noise that a client purchased for me to use with this film. I'm going to add the footage to the media pool, but I have to make sure it does not go in as an RGB clip. It can only go in as a mat. Check to make sure that the clip is identified by the mat symbol in the bottom left hand corner, because otherwise this will not work. After that you go into your color page and select any of the clips, it doesn't matter which one because in the note editor we're going to be working in timeline mode. That's because usually when we apply film grain to a project, we want to affect every clip uniformly, just like when we apply blanking. By default in timeline mode, there are no nodes, so you'll have to create your first one. Alt-S is enough to create this serial standalone node. After that, I'm going to create a layer mixer, because that's how I'm going to blend my grain into the footage. But I don't want the node underneath it to be the original footage, so I have to first break the link between the source input and this third node, which I'm going to rename as grain. And then I'm going to right click on the grain node and add a mat. The only available mat I have in this project is the grain, and that's what I'll select. At the moment, the grain mat is doing half of its job. It's sending key information over to the grain node that we're going to blend with the timeline. But the image is still reflecting the old signal that it received. So we have to make sure that it's receiving the grain itself as the RGB input. As soon as I make this connection, you'll see that your footage changes quite dramatically. And what's happening is that the external mat is now sending information for the visibility of the node as well as the transparency two in one, which is pretty neat. Now to move on to the final steps, we just want to clean up the way that this is being composited because obviously it's far too strong. So I'm going to right click on my layer and switch the composite mode to overlay. I'll also want to select my grain node and inside of the key palette, adjust my key output gain. So you can think of this as the strength of the node. When I do this, the intensity of the grain in the image goes up and down. So I'll just type in 0.5 for half the strength. Just going to show you a bit of the floor, and if I was to play this, you'll see a bit what looks like natural film grain. The grain footage, by the way, is only 3 seconds long, so even though it's a 4K clip, it is relatively small, and by default, if you use something as a mat, if it runs its full duration, it will automatically loop. The option to turn the loop off is even available inside of the external mat controls of the key palette. Once you're finished, you can switch back to clip mode and continue working with your color grades and composites the way you would normally. Having said that, you probably want to do this grain workflow last because it does require quite a bit of processing power and you don't want to force Resolve to process something that's not really vital for you to see at the start of the project. So usually even if I do set this up, I'll break one of the links to stop the process from happening and then go and do all my clip stuff and then remember to turn it back on when I'm finished. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.